Hey guys, Sean here from visibledark.ca. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's been a while since I uh, put out a video. It's been a couple weeks at least and um, thought I'd uh, give you an update as to what I'm doing. It's been a lot of clouds and uh, rain lately so that's one reason why I haven't really produced a video. Um, and uh, I'd like to say thank you to everyone that uh, has purchased my uh, beginner's tutorial. Uh, really fantastic. I appreciate the support and um, it is a phenomenal success and uh, everyone I'm getting great feedback from it uh, people that have purchased it and have used it and I've seen some images they've sent me some images actually that they uh, produced using the uh, instructional tutorial and uh, they've gotten some really fabulous results and they've learned a lot more about Pixinsight. Um, I actually had one gentleman say that he thought he knew Pixinsight, but uh, uh, beyond a beginner standpoint but uh, in in viewing my tutorial he actually learned a lot so that was fantastic and um, I've had other people from around the world France the UK Australia USA Canada even where I am um, all telling me that uh, the uh, tutorial is really good and they really appreciate it and they like it a lot so if you haven't gotten yours yet uh, check it out and uh, you might if you're new to Pixinsight and you want to learn uh, how to use it uh, it's a great tutorial for that purpose but let's get going to what's new here uh, those of you who watch my videos uh, will probably see something a little different here and um, I'm going to explain to you uh, what that is. So let's have a closer look. So this is a new addition to the telescope setup. Um, this is actually a Vixen FL55 SS. It's a 55 millimeter APO refractor. Um, it has fluorite. It's made of fluorite instead of glass and um, this is on loan from kwtelescope.com they were kind enough to uh, loan it to me to do some test imaging with so i've been uh, working with this lately i haven't had a lot of clear nights it's been cloudy and rainy the last uh, couple weeks or so but um, i had a chance the other night to uh, do some imaging with it and uh, i'm gonna probably have a chance tonight and tomorrow night as well so uh, basically what I have hooked up here is uh, I have the QHY 168C camera, a colored cooled CMOS camera connected to it. I have the uh, reducer flattener installed in it that uh, brings it down to 236 millimeter focal length, which is a really wide field of view. Um, of course, I've got the uh, Pegasus Astro Focus Cube version 2 installed as well, and uh, that's for autofocusing. And uh, then we've got the uh, the Vixen Apo refractor, the 55 millimeter here, and it's uh, piggybacking on my uh, Esprit 100. Now there is a filter wheel here that's holding the uh, filter. I have currently I have an Optolong L Pro filter in there for broadband imaging. I was doing some imaging on M31. Um, the filter. Well, it's it's there. The filter wheel is there, but um, it's not for the purpose of switching filters on this setup. Uh, it simply was to accommodate spacing, um, getting the spacing right from the the uh, reducer to the camera sensor. So this just happened to work out that using this uh, filter wheel with the connections that it had uh, facilitated getting the proper spacing. So that's why we used it. Okay, this is the Vixen uh, FL55 uh, fluorite uh, telescope. Native focal length is about 300 millimeters. Right now it's set up with uh, the focal reducer and the flattener. Flattener is inside the draw tube here, and you can use flattener separate. You can use native focal length, and you can use these two together. So if you're going to use the reducer, though, it has to be with the flattener. They thread into the draw tube. And if you want to do eyepiece, uh, use eyepiece, uh, do visual. There's a inch and a quarter visual back that fits in here that comes with the telescope. The uh, the, the reducer and the focal, uh, the flattener are available separate or in a package. This is the package where you get the flattener and the reducer and all the stuff you need to hook up, other than whatever your camera is going to require. Um, this one's also hooked up with the Pegasus Astro uh, focus control. And on the bottom, we have a 3816 uh, threaded hole, so standard big tripod. 
as I've got a quarter 20 adapter in there and we've got this ADM uh, DV clamp on to hold this thing on the scope. There's also two other metric uh, screws here for this. And, oh, that's over here. Comes with this mix and dovetail bar mounted here too. So it, we're just not using that for this setup. Um, we have not taken anything through this thing yet. Sean's going to do that hopefully as soon as it gets nice and uh, clear out again. And uh, we'll take a look at what kind of images we get. The idea with this is, of course, uh, it's something comparable to what the William Optics uh, Red Cats are for focal length and whatever. Well, first of all, it's got calcium fluoride lens in it. So if you're talking about uh, correcting for color, uh, you've got some of the best glass that you can have in a telescope. Again, when you have such a short focal length telescope, uh, you got to really work on the lenses to, uh, to get all the colors to come to focus. And the idea of a fluorite lens, it's premium glass, uh, that's one of the ways you control chromatic aberration. And uh, that is one of the benefits. So the only thing is, the proof is in the pudding. We have to see some images taken by this. Sean's a capable imager, so uh, what you see from him would be indicative of what you could expect to get out of this telescope yourself. And we will also be uh, getting it set up. He's going to be using a Canon DSLR on this. These are made for basically connecting DSLRs up to. Uh, but the interface we're going to work on is bringing it down to a 42 millimeter interface, and he'll be using a QHY camera on it. So there's the inside of it. The uh, 55 millimeter fluorite lens. And it's been uh, working out really well. Like I said, I was able to take some images of M31, and uh, I was quite, uh, quite happy with the results. Here we just get a shot of the label here the FL55SS from Vixen. I don't know if that's in focus or not. There, that probably looks a little better, a little more focused. Yeah, so this is the uh, setup that I've been using the last clear night that we had, doing some imaging with it. Uh, wide field targets, so M31 is a good one for that. It's, it's a big target. Um, hoping to do the Pleiades, but I have these trees here, and these trees block M M45. They block a lot of objects, actually, for me, unfortunately. Uh, so I have a very narrow window of sky to work with, which is overhead and into the southwest. It gives me it gives me a good selection of objects, but there's a lot of stuff in the uh, south here that I can't image because of the trees and uh, going over east as well, I can't image. So M45, uh, right now about 5 a.m. rises, it comes out of the trees here and I'm able to start imaging it there. I might get like an hour on it, but that's about it. So uh, that's something I'll have to try and see, switch over to it at 5 a.m. And, and maybe try and get an hour of data with the, uh, the FL55 here and see, uh, see how it frames up. It'll, it should be really nice, obviously. Uh, M45 is a good, uh, good target for a wide field uh, Apple refractor like this. So um, there's a lot of talk about the Raptor 61 right now because the Raptor 61 is new and it's coming. It's not available yet. It's on pre-order status. Uh, but in the meantime, I thought I'd give this a try and see what it was all about. Vixen has a good name for telescopes. And um, they've got a, a good lineup of uh, telescopes, actually very, very good quality optics and uh, good, good viewing. This one here, you can actually use it. You could use it for uh, astrophotography like I'm doing, but it's a great uh, portable scope too for visual. It doesn't come with a diagonal, so you'd have to get a diagonal, but um, it... Uh, would deliver really nice, sharp, crisp views uh, visually as well. And I'm going to be doing some more imaging with it, like I said, uh, hopefully tonight if things work out well. 
So stay tuned for some more updates on it. And again, thank you to kwtelescope.com for lending it to me to uh, do some imaging and uh, testing with. Okay, thanks for tuning in. Hope you're getting some clear skies. And uh, we'll see you in the next video, of course. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like. Uh, always appreciate that support. And uh, everyone take care. We'll see you again soon.